Konosu Explosion Spinoff, Episode 2, Badly Summarized. We start off with a tale as old as time, two cute girls going shopping. But more importantly, Megamine bullying Union. Back at school, Union, wait, hold on. Alright, that's much better. Anyway, Union shows off her brand new knife to the other girls who are all intensely jealous. Megamine, who can't stand not being the center of attention, immediately grabs the knife. Everyone is deeply concerned about this because, well, Megamine with a knife. Even worse, she then challenges Union to their daily competition, which is, Oh, I have all my fingers, the knife goes chop, 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 and if I mace the spaces in between, my fingers will come off. To everyone's relief, Union wisely decides that the last thing she wants to do is play the knife game with Megamine, and hands over her lunch as the penalty for losing the game today. But you're a winner in our hearts, Union. After school, Megamine heads home and is very cute with Komeko. And of course, we learn the reason that Megamine needs Union's lunch is because their parents are being deadbeats again and not feeding their children, and thus is giving Komeko all of Union's food. Komeko is very happy and tells her big sister about the fun new game she learned to play, which, uh, based on her description, is deeply concerning. Spoilers that Komeko is extra creepy and secretly the next double creep. In a reoccurring thing, Komeko spouts a bunch of chuny nonsense that sounds weird but in actuality is strangely prophetic and reveals that she got a prize for her game, a cute little cat which she fully intends on eating. Megamine is a little bit horrified for this and offers Komeko the meal in exchange for the cat which Komeko eagerly accepts. The next day Megamine shows off her new familiar to all of her classmates and again spouts a bunch of chuny nonsense which will be very prophetic later. Chomusuke reveals that she is very hungry and Megamine complains that she doesn't have any way to feed her poor cat. This of course starts a new extortion racket whereas in Megamine and Chomusuke will now be taking everyone's lunch. Thank you very much. Poochin is initially skeptical and demands that Megamine get rid of the cat, only for Megamine to scout more prescient chuny nonsense, which Poochin finds rather admirable, awards Megamine points, and says that she may keep her cat. Poochin then talks about how they are going to be enacting the Crimson Demon secret leveling scheme for the day, which will allow our heroines to quickly level up and attain the advanced magic they need to become real Crimson Demons. This is also a group assignment, and like middle school teachers everywhere, Poochin gets off on torturing his students and tells them they have to make their own groups. Megamine taunts Union for a little bit, and then Aru comes over and shockingly actually wants to spend time around Megamine, much to Union's distress. Megamine is, of course, very smug about this, right up until Funifuda and Doronko come up and say they want to be partners with Union, leaving Megamine high and dry with just Aru. Aru then comments that Megamine has clearly been NTR'd by her friend, which is by far the funniest line in the show so far. It also further establishes that Aru is the real main character of this show and is the most savage of the Crimson Demons by far. Outside, Poochin lays out a mat of weapons for everyone to pick up and try out. They're all oversized and awesome, so of course all of our characters start posing dramatically and spouting chuny nonsense about awakening their inner power and how their mystical might allows them to wield weapons they have no right doing, as most of them is bigger than they are. Right up until Union picks up a weapon and points out that it's basically made out of foam and it is in no way a practical weapon, as a full-sized one wouldn't be able to be lifted by a bunch of scrawny middle school girls. This, of course, irritates everyone enormously and explains why Union doesn't really have any friends. After deducting points from Union's grade, Poochin pulls out what is the real test of today. They have found a bunch of baby seals and frozen them to allow the little girls to run around and stomp them all to death. Most of the cast is absolutely horrified at the thought of joining the seal cub clubbing club. But showing once more that she has absolutely no moral compunctions at all, Megamine steps up and says she's absolutely willing to go to town on a baby seal. This being Konosuba though, it turns out that Baby Seals fight back and the Baby Seal promptly kicks Megamine's ass. After recovering from getting her butt whooped, Megamine bullies the other girls into killing off the Baby Seals. Right as the rest of the girls are about to commit their first murder, the Baby Seal cast summon Bigger Fish and we get the first of our absolutely classic meme faces this episode. Our main characters bravely run away until a massive fire blast takes out the gargoyle and the hero has arrived. That's right, boys and girls, Kazuma Sato himself is on the scene. Our fearless neat will save the day once more and... Wait, what's that? It's not Kazuma Sato? No, instead of being saved by a useless neat from another world, the girls have been saved by the useless neat from their own village. Bokurori then goes on to show that he is just as perverted and weird as Kazuma, causing all of the girls to react to him in great disgust, despite the fact that he just saved their hide moments before. Wow, he really is just like Cosmo. 
Haru then gives an absolutely sick burn to Bokori, telling him that the world would be better off if we could go back in time and delete us the fetus. Game! Proving once more that she is indeed the burn master of the Crimson Demon Clan. However, the girl's troubles are far from over as it turns out that the gargoyles are now attacking and destroying the Crimson Demon Village. They react with all of the aplomb and dignity that you would expect from a bunch of middle schoolers, sans Aru, and panic about what to do while their homes are being destroyed. However, they seem to have forgotten just where they live. Four middle-aged men teleport in and who should really be past their Chunabio phase, but take a moment to pose and introduce themselves like the maniacs they are. They then proceed to do, well, exactly what the Crimson Demon Clan is famous for and why no one invades the village. And they save it. Hooray. However, their saving it involved doing so in the most destructive way possible, so things are looking down for our heroes. How will they ever recover from having their hometown utterly destroyed? Just kidding, they're the Crimson Demon Flan, they fix it by the next morning. Wizards, man, they just they got no sense of right and wrong, you know? And that's the video, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this very silly summary of our latest offering of Konosuba, and check back again next week where we'll be going over episode 3 in this amazing series.